Right, here we go. Back again. Back again. All right. And today I'm going to be covering, well, touching on um, the germ theory of disease. All right, because it is just that. And uh, as always, um, with everything, there's always two sides to the coin, as we'll see. And in terms of the germ theory and germs, well, these are the two sides here. And it's Pasture on the left and Beecham on the right. And we'll get into these two in a minute. But basically it is the germ theory against the terrain theory. As you can see there, one's vaccinate the fish and one's clean out the tank. Right? Makes sense, of course. And then in terms of the germ theory, the germ theory of disease is the currently accepted scientific theory for many diseases. It states that microorganisms known as pathogens or germs can lead to disease. Right? So these are small organisms that invade the body or humans or animals. Right? And uh, in terms of has it been pro proven, uh, is the germ... Is germ theory proved? Well, the answer is no. It hasn't been proved. So, it's not an actual fact. It's only accepted. And that's generally believed or recognised to be valid or correct. Right, so, it's far from the word true. Or more importantly, it's far from the word proven. And that is demonstrated by evidence or argument to be true or existent. And, of course, between them two words, there is a very, very, very big fucking difference. Alright? And uh, we'll get into a bit more. Germ theory versus terrain theory. The germ theory vs terrain theory is basically the argument that germs are what we need to worry about and we need to keep finding ways to kill them off. Terrain theory argues that if the body is well and balanced, then germs are uh, germs that are sorry, a natural part of life and the environment will be dealt with by the body without causing sickness. Right? And uh, this is pasture here. And uh, Pastor was actually a religious man, so there was a conflict of interests there because, of course, the germ theory is also related to uh, evolution. So, obviously, with his religious beliefs, there was a conflict of interests. And uh, here's Perry Jacques Anthony Beecham here, and it says that um, key points. Healthy tissue immune to germ infection. Biological terrain. Germs are opportunists. Support tissue health and well-being. Nutrition, rest, hygiene, exercise, emotional well-being. The primary cause of disease is in us. Always in us. Anthony Beecham, 1883. Theory ignored and fell into obscurity. Surprise, fucking surprise, right? It didn't fit the narrative, of course. And uh, <laughs> in terms of Pasture v Beecham, uh, if you look online, there's lots and lots of stuff. And uh, I'll cover a couple of bits. But honestly, you, 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 if you look into it, you'll probably be there all day because uh, it goes on and on and on. I mean, they've tried to hide this man's work, but it's... Uh, they're investing millions in it today. So what does that tell you? And this article here says that La microbe nest re la terrain est taut. Sorry for that to any French people. But that means the microbe is nothing. The terrain is everything. And this is the last words of Louis Pasteur, father of the germ theory of disease, of course. Now, ain't that something that he would say that on his deathbed? There you go. And from this article as well, Beecham's cellular theory is almost completely opposite 
to that of pastures. Beecham noted that these germs that pasture was so terrified of were opportun opportunistic in nature. They were everywhere and even existed inside of us in a symbiotic relationship. Beecham noticed in his research that it was only when the tissue of the host became damaged or compromised that these germs began to manifest as a prevailing symptom, not cause of disease. Right? You get it? And this is another article here. Uh, this one's pretty good. And it's from uh, 2013. And it says that germ theory disproved in 1884. Because, of course, the germ theory goes back to the 1860s. And it says the germ theory is what modern medicine hangs its hat on as the major cause of disease in the world. Many people assume that viruses, bacteria and other germs cause most of the diseases in the world today. What if there were exceptions to that theory? Hmm. It then says, if there are exceptions to the facts, then how does it continue to have merit? Exceptions to the rule make it just that. A rule not a law, exactly. It then says D.D. Palmer is, and this is the guy that discovered uh, chiropractice, and he says that one question was always uppermost in my mind in my search for the cause of disease. I desired to know why one person was ailing and his associate eating at the same table, working in the same shop, at the same bench was not. Why? What difference was there in the two persons that caused one to have pneumonia, catar, typhoid or rheumatism while his partner, similarly situated, escaped? Why? Right, so uh, if you go by the germ theory, how could that be? Of course, it wouldn't make sense. It then says... Visualise a garbage can that is overflowing with garbage and it is infested with flies. The flies represent germs and the garbage represents an overflow of toxins from depleted body functions. Some might go out to the can with the bug spray and treat the garbage by dousing it with harsh chemicals to kill off all the flies. You walk away from the garbage coughing and inhaling the harsh chemicals, but at least all the flies are dead. A little while later though, what happens? Yep, you guessed it, back again. It then says, the flies are back and in even greater number. That is the mentality of the medical community to treat the effect. What is the one sure fire way to keep the flies away for a longer period of time? Clean out the con by removing the garbage. Right? You get in the picture here. It then says, Your body as a whole does a great job of throwing out its garbage when it can function at its best. So, if germs aren't the cause of disease, then what is? I like Dr. Fred. Fred Barges take on this question and he says there is but one cause in diseases the body's inability to comprehend itself and or its environment there is but one cure in disease the body's ability to heal itself and there is only one thing that any doctor can do for a patient and that is to remove an obstruction to healing, thus facilitating it. Right? So there you go. Uh, your body can fight off just about anything if it's got the right terrain, if you look after it. And uh, also, this is from the article that I'll link in. It says, When the germ theory was first being proposed in the 19th century by frontrunners Robert Noch and Lewis Pasteur, it was very controversial and had many detractors within the scientific community. 
one critic in 1884 was so convinced that the theory was wrong, he gulped down a glass of water that was mixed heavily with vibrocholerae, the bacterium associated with cholera, right? Ast ast astounding his colleagues, he was completely unaffected by the pathogen. The magazine Science, our buddies, published an article in 2000 describing the incident, stating, for unexplained reason, he remained symptom-free, but nevertheless incorrect, right? So yeah, uh, he didn't die and he didn't get cholera. Surprise, surprise. It then says, that sums up the arrogance of the modern scientific and medical communities today. If they claim that vibrocholerae causes cholera, and this example showed that the man avoided cholera, how can he be incorrect? Right? And it then says that, uh, staying with that, Dr. Reggie Gold once said that rude facts destroy pretty theories. Instead of trying to delve deeper into the question of why he didn't become ill, the medical and science community blatantly ignored this exception, so it could hold on to its pretty theory. Surprise, surprise, right? Don't want to spoil a good theory or a good narrative now, do we? And uh, like I said, this is, if you look online in terms of the germ theory versus the terrain theory, or, or the cellular theory, you'll find a lot of stuff, but I want to link this one in, and it is debunking the Lewis Pasture mon monorphism germ theory with scientific live cell observation. Stem cells, New York Times, shape-shifting bacteria, Anthony Beecham discovers toxin terrain theory of the pleomorphism detoxification, cell regeneration, confirmed via cytology and microbiology. Right, get it? Bit of a mouthful, but uh, yeah, I'll link it in. Here's a quote here. Germs seek their natural habitat, diseased tissue, rather than being the cause of diseased tissue. Here's another one. Nothing is lost, nothing is created, all is transformed. Nothing is the prey of death. All is the prey of life. Anthony Beecham. And uh, I came across this book that I accidentally downloaded. I'll link in the article where you can find it. And uh, I'm going to give this one a read, possibly tonight. So I'll maybe report on it again. Uh, I'm no expert on germs or any of these two guys here. Like I said, I'm just touching on it. I'm just scratching the surface, really. Uh, you can all do your own digging, that's for sure. But in terms of facts, well, the fact is that the theory of germs, uh, the germ theory of disease, is just that, a theory. It's not a fact. It's still not been proven to this day, over 160 years fucking later. In, uh, in the 19th century, they used to say that Beecham was a crank and that he didn't know what he was on about and he'd fucking lost his mind. Ain't that a surprise? And uh, that, as you can see from that article there from Wired. And uh, this is the book again, Beecham or Pasture, the lost chapter in the history of biology. Like I said, I'll link it in. And uh, if you're interested, you can check it out yourself. And I also seen this meme here, which is one of the front runners for meme of the week. And it says, if mandating vaccines was actually about health, then why not mandate healthy eating? Huh? Why not mandate exercise? Because it's not about health. It's about money, power and control by way of forced medical intervention with an extremely harmful product. Yep, and in terms of vaccines, well, yeah, that just about says it all. So, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the germ theory of disease, and that is about it. Bye-bye.